Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alex from Fitment Industries, and today we're gonna to be talking about five mistakes people make when they lower their car. People lower their car all the time. It's probably the most common modification right next to buying aftermarket wheels and tires, but a lot of times people make really key mistakes when they lower their car. So we're here to help you with that by talking to you about these mistakes. So the first mistake that people make, which is probably the biggest one, is they never get their car aligned after they lower their car. It doesn't matter if it's a lowering spring, if it's coilovers, if it's bags or anything like that. When you don't don't get your car aligned after doing any sort of modification towards your suspension. You end up getting excessive wear and tear, excessive camber. You get all sorts of issues with how your car actually rides and handles and turns. You'll want to make sure that you get your car aligned no matter what you do to your suspension. Definitely something that you don't want to skip out on. So just remember that you're going to have to pocket a couple hundred bucks after you install your suspension to get it aligned. Second mistake people make is they don't roll, pull, or even deal with inner fender liners if they want that aggressive setup. We get a ton of messages every day of people wanting to run nine and a half wides, 10 and a half wides, 18, 19 inch tires and wheels, but then they don't want to roll or pull their fenders. Well, unfortunately it is going to happen. You need to end up rolling, pulling, modifying your fender liners nine times out of 10, because if you want that aggressive look, you're going to want to do that to safeguard your tires and your wheels overall. A lot of people run these super wide setups. They don't roll or pull their fenders, or they don't even remove inner liner trim, and they end up dealing with a ton of mess. Things will eat into their tires. You get a ton of curb rash on the lip of your wheel. You end up dealing with just terrible suspension, uh, just terrible overall quality. So you want to make sure that if you're going for an overall aggressive setup that you roll and pull your fenders. If you have to deal with inner trim, uh, plastic liners and things like that, you will likely have to cut them or at least remove them from your car so that you can fit that wider setup. So the third mistake people make when lowering their car is that they don't think it's going to affect their ride quality. And it definitely does. It doesn't only change how the ride feels, but it changes how you drive as a whole. You have to remember that if you lower your car, if you're slamming it to the ground, if you're dealing with anything in between that, it's gonna change how your car feels on the road. So you're gonna have to handle, you know, turning. You're gonna have to realize that you're not gonna be able to go over speed bumps like you used to. You're not gonna be able to hit potholes like you used to. Not that you tried to in the past, but overall those sort of things are gonna be much more disastrous towards you if you end up hitting one of those things when your car is lowered versus when it wasn't lowered. And that's where we kind of go into number four. And the number Number four thing is it's okay with always trying to be affordable, just don't go cheap. Cheap suspension is one of the key components and key reasons why a lot of people fall out of love with their cars because it overall makes the car feel like trash. You want to make sure that if you're looking to get something for lowering your car, whether that be a suspension components or bushings or things like that, get something that you know is going to be good quality. You can always wait till something is on sale or maybe you can get a deal on something, but our recommendation is to never just go cheap. If you have price in mind, you should wait a couple more paychecks, save up your money and get some quality suspension because when you do lower your car, it's going to feel good. It won't feel bad. And you have to remember that for better or worse, once you lower a car, it is difficult to go backwards and go back to how things were. So, that goes into our fifth and final tip, and that is you need to understand that this isn't just simply a plug and play kit. With suspension and lowering your car in general, you can put coilovers in there, you can put lowering springs and do all that, and you're gonna get the foundation down. I mean, it's gonna work for you, the car is gonna be lower, it's gonna look great, that's awesome. But if you really wanna dive into making the car feel just as well as it looks, you're gonna wanna make sure that when you're dialing in your suspension, you take into consideration things like your camber, your caster, your toe, your polyurethane bushings, all those sort of small little details are what's gonna overall affect the integrity of your suspension. You can get the foundation laid by just installing your coilovers, your lowering springs, and that's all fine and dandy. But if you really want your vehicle to drive as best as possible, you're gonna wanna dive into those details. You're gonna wanna dive into if you're gonna need to have your suspension locked in a certain way at certain spindles and things like that. So don't just think when you buy a coilover kit that you can just install them, run them as is, and pray for the best because ultimately you can't. So those are five common mistakes that we found people make when lowering their car. We hope you guys enjoyed. Please drop a comment what you would like to see next. But I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We'll see you later. Peace.